So, Malka, we, we agree that, I, I agree with you that it's great that we have a Jewish state, a place where we could self-determine, where we could be safe. Perhaps the reasons are quite different. Ariel's main concerns, and these are my concerns as well, is that it, it poses a, a human rights issue, that in order for us to be secure and free, that comes at the expense of the Palestinians. Do you see a way in which we can have our national aspirations in a way that Palestinians can also have equal rights or their national aspirations? Uh, that's a great question, and I think that that is one of the like the biggest questions that people. Um, uh, do you hear me? I'm sorry, right, am yeah, I yeah. muted? Yeah, okay. No, we hear you. I, I think that's one of the biggest questions that people are asking today, and there's a lot of. Um, guilt that some people feel about the idea that there's going to be a Jewish state and yet there are these other people and they don't have a state. Um, I'm here to try and help assuage that guilt for a number of reasons. Um, first of all, um, there, there, you know, there's a really a lot, a lot of history that goes with who was in this region and when. Um, we could go, you know, there are whole semesters and universities that are dedicated and giant books that are dedicated. But very, very briefly, um, for around 1917, Arabs started a big influx into Israel. There were, of course, Arabs here in the, in the region. I'm not here to suggest that there weren't. But there was a major influx of Arabs into this region from Egypt, from Syria, from Jordan. Um, they came um, under the, under, they started to come under the Turks and then under the British mandate to fill for jobs and things that the British needed. Um, the war happened in 1948. Um, in which um, Israel declared its independence. There were big questions about um, who, uh, about did Israel forcibly expel people? According to reports uh, by the British, some 70% of Arabs left on, on their own um, because they had received um, information or encouragement, I guess, from Arab countries that were planning to destroy the Jewish state or the newfound Jewish state. Um, that they should leave so that they can cleanse the area of Jews and then they'll come back and they'll be able to live wherever and they'll be able to take the spoils of the war. Happens to be that they weren't able to fulfill that promise to those people. And so those people, um, some of them did end up being an, allowed to return and some of them didn't. A lot of them went to Jordan. Then um, Jordan basically, uh, some time went by um, and Jordan, uh, the 1967 Six Day War happened. Um, in the midst of all that, Jordan occupied what Ariel would call the West Bank, I would call Judea and Samaria. And, uh, and these people, basically we had the Six Day War. Um, Israel liberated the lands uh, in 1967. The people who were in the lands at the time were Jordanians. Um, and then after the Six Day War, Israel being such a young country was kind of I think in shock from itself, didn't know what to do with the local populations, dealt with the uh, with still the rage of uh, local Ar Arab uh, countries, dealt with the rage uh, and shock of the international community who suddenly saw that the Jewish state went from being a bunch of Holocaust survivors who needed blankets thrown around their shoulders to an un incredible, uh, miraculous army. And uh, a population was formed of people who um, were left in the middle of all this. And one place in which I think that Ariel and I can find common ground is that um, Israel made some profound mistakes. From that point, um, and Israel continues to make profound mistakes, I would never suggest to you that Israel has done everything right up until this point. Um, and I think that Israel has um, contributed to the problem of what Ariel will call a refugee problem, um, but I will call a more of a stateless problem. Um, and the biggest thing that we did wrong was to suggest to the Jordanians that they could stay um, that, and that possibly there would be some kind of rights given for a state. Um, in the 1980s, all these people who Ariel ca calls Palestinians um, were in fact Jordanians. They had Jordanian citizenship up until the 1980s when King Abdullah started to withdraw um, their citizenship, basically taking it away, making them stateless. And so basically, Jordan, it was sort of as if Jordan gave birth to a baby, left it on our doorstep, and then took off. 
And Israel was left with this big population. And because Jews are a good people and a merciful people, we don't just expunge people from the land. And as we can see here from our discussion, um, the, the, um, the impulses of Jews toward humanitarianism can take many different forms. My humanitarian effort toward the Palestinian, uh, people who call themselves Palestinian people today, would be to liberate them from their horrible oppressive authority, the Palestinian Authority. And I know Ariel also agrees with me um, that the Palestinian Authority is a corrupt and a really, uh, I'll teach you all a Hebrew word, dafuk, okay? It's a really messed up um, okay, entity. Yeah. Um, I, would, I would try to liberate them from, from that situation. And I would force Jordan to give them back their Jordanian citizenship. I mean, what they did taking away the nationality of like so many people is completely immoral. It's unjust, it's, it's, and it's, and what's sickest about it is it's the manipulation of a massive body of people, um, many of whom would like to live just a regular life like I live my le regular life. Um, and it's a manipulation of those people for the very cynical cause of just trying to destroy the teensy weensy little ethnic protectorate that we have here in this region. Um, and so do I think that we can live, um, that we can find a humanitarian solution for these people? Yes. I, do I think it's important? Of course it's important. Do I think it's Israel's job and we should be beating our chest because we've been abusing people for 70 years? No, I don't think that. Thank you, Malka. Ariel, all you. Well, I, I'm not going to touch on the weird hogwash that is um, suggested that Palestinians who are indigenous and native to the land of Palestine should have Jordanian citizenship, even though they live in territory that is Palestine and controlled by Israel. But so because that, that's a little too odd to go into. Um, but so I, I will mention um, instead, of, I'll tell a, another story of the um, time that I have spent in Hebron, of which Melka calls a normal life. And I think there is nothing at all that is normal about Hebron. And most of the things that go on in Hebron are not normal. But uh, the last time I was there, I believe it was 2017, um, it was the summer and I was there uh, when settlers, and as Melka said, her husband is the spokesperson for the settler community of Hebron. So I do hold um, him in particular and her by a association uh, complicit directly in this when settlers invaded and took over um, a Palestinian home. Now it was a three story, it was a home uh, right off of Shahada Street. I can't recall the name of the street, but right, right in the middle of um, uh, historic old Hebron. It was a three story um, apartment uh, building, a building. And Palestinians were living there in the building when Israeli settlers invaded the building. It was a horrific and violent um, experience for the Palestinians that I that I witnessed with my own eyes. They dragged down uh, the steps of their own house and then basically uh, locked inside as it was occupied uh, by these settlers. Now then the Israeli military comes in um, to protect the settlers, not to protect the family with children living in the home, not to protect uh, the, them from violence, but for, to protect the settlers in their quest to uh, take this home. And, and Malka talks about caring about uh, humanitarian, you know, having humanitarian concerns. For people. Well, this was the, the military did not in any Sort of humanitarian effort, but instead they they came in and secured the perimeter so that the settlers could remain there. And in the uh, I believe it was the Israeli municipality brought in water, uh, a water system for the settlers, and uh, children were brought in, um, behaving incredibly violently, encouraged by their parents. Um, I had, an, an, and I imagine uh, Malka knows her, Anat Cohen, who's a, a notorious uh, Hebron settler. She owns a cafe on Shikata Street, um, uh, physically assaulted me. And 
this property uh, continued being occupied by the settlers for an ongoing basis. Now, if Malka is going to talk about concern for the Palestinians, the first thing that was necessary to be done there was to expel the thieves from coming in and taking this uh, home and to protect the family, to protect their physical safety. But that's not what uh, the situation there is. And, and again, I, you know, I take such issue with the word normal because there is nothing normal about a military occupation. There's nothing normal about over 20 checkpoints within a city where you have to give um, your, often you have to give a number that you've been assigned in order to enter and walk to your home. Where you have to get special permission to have family come and visit uh, where children have to go through on a regular basis in a terrifying um, experience. But, you know, the, what we have going on here is um, Israel has, has created for themselves a situation of one state. It is, in fact, now one state from the river to the sea where Israel controls all of the borders, including the siege around Gaza. So while the Palestinian Authority um, has, you know, plays a role in the West Bank, and Malka is correct, I do uh, take many issues with the Palestinian Authority and consider it a, a corrupt and uh, repressive uh, government, the Palestinian Authority has no control even of their own borders. Myself, who um, have been expelled by Israel, I can't travel in to visit my Palestinian friends. I can't travel in through Jordan because Israel controls that border. So Israel is the um, authority for all of these areas. Israel enters at will. Can you imagine here in the United States if another country came in and entered our country at will to arrest people, to raid houses, etc. So Israel is the main, the single state actor here. They are the controlling body. What we have here is a system from the river to the sea where one group is privileged over another, where one group has a set of rights that the other group does not have. We have two separate laws for two groups of people. And I don't know about Malka, but that's a violation of my Jewish values. Thank you. Uh, to just, address just to, some of the things that Ariel said, if that's okay. Yeah, sure. I was just going to give a little summation, but go, go ahead. No problem. Um, I feel like I should have shut this down uh, faster, but since Ariel continues to like crazily smear a community of perfectly nice people um, and distort facts to like a degree which I find to be so cynical that it's like almost in bad faith, not almost, um, I want to talk a little bit and this is going to be the only time I talk about Hebron because while she continues to like attack and attack and attack one nice city in Israel, um, we're really here to talk about the rights of, uh, of the Jewish people to their own state. Um, I'll just say that 97% of Hebron is Yudenrein. Jews are not supposed to go in there. Um, every once in a while, there is a certain level of security which goes in to, to kind of patrol around the edges of this tiny little 3% area of Jews. And incidentally, most of the area which in which Jews are allowed, Arabs are also allowed. Um, here I am, you can see my background is the tomb of the ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Sarah, Rebecca, and Leah. And yes, the Jewish people share an ancestor, and that is Abraham, our father. Um, and the Bible also records that um, that even though we know that there is a, um, a struggle between Ishmael and between Isaac, that at the end of Abraham's life, when he passed away, um, Isaac and Ishmael came together and buried their father together. Um, the Jewish people called the city Hebron, which, uh, which means to connect, which means friend. The Arabs call it Al-Khalil, uh, Ibrahim Halil Allah. Abraham was the friend of God. We do share this city and we can share this city and it's like it's sick to me that Ariel would take a place which is a which is a tense city. Don't get me wrong, it is a tense city, but it's a place where where the issues are really being worked on. You know, there is a lot of cooperation between Arabs and Jews in Hebron. There's a lot of good relations between Arabs and Jews in Hebron. Whenever Arabs feel that they are free enough to express their pro-Jewish ideas, I won't get into you with you. I won't get into with you 
how what Arabs have to do to sell property to Jews in Hebron, you should know that in the Palestinian Authority in Hebron and anywhere else, if a member of the Palestinian Authority would dare to be caught selling his property to a Jew, he gets life in prison with hard labor, and that is after he goes to jail and is tortured. We have seen this over and over again. There are many Arabs who approach the, the Jewish community of Hebron saying, we would love to sell you our property, and they have to go through. There's unbelievable, crazy stuff that has to happen in order for an Arab to be able to sell his property to a Jew if he wants to. Um, my husband has friends in Hebron who are Arab, and they want to take a picture with him, but they don't because they know that if the Palestinian Authority would see a picture of Ishai with this person, that that person would be taken into jail, just like Mohammed Jabri was taken into jail. When he took a picture, Yehuda Glick, who is a Temple Mount activist and a former member of Knesset, came to show respect to the Jabri clan, to break bread for Ramallah, okay? Talk about Jewish people showing respect to, um, you know, other people who are who are here in this land, not making it all about, you know, uh, Jewish, uh, what have you called it before online, uh, Jewish supremacy, I think, Ariel, not making it about Jewish supremacy, but, but showing respect for Arabs and for Arab culture, coming to break bread in Ramallah. Mohammed Jabri took a picture with Yehuda Glick in his own home, breaking bread with Yehuda Glick, and he was taken into Palestinian Authority jail and tortured. The, the unbelievable audacity to suggest that the Jewish people are this like horrible, villainous, violent people, when really the Palestinian people, the people who call themselves Palestinian are, are just are just like languishing under the thumb of the Palestinian Authority and how they wish they could just have regular relationships and how they wish they didn't have to hide their relationships with Hebron Jews. Um, I just find it to be like, it's bad faith. It's bad faith to describe Hebron that way. Um, and I think that this is the last we should discuss it because I know people didn't come to hear about Hebron, but they came to hear about the whole state of Israel. And that's what, that's what I have to say about that. I think we... I think we absolutely should be discussing Hebron. Your husband is the spokesperson for the Hebron, uh, for the Jewish settler community in Hebron. The Jewish Hebron community. It's okay. You could say it. City. You could say it. It is the Jewish settler community, which is illegal. Under I guess you can't say it. Law, but um, Hebron. Hebron is the flashpoint is a flashpoint city in the West Bank, a flashpoint city for violence, a flashpoint city for apartheid, and a, a showcasing of the most grotesque um, checkpoints. And I, I just wanted to... Uh, I go through checkpoints to go to the grocery store, just saying. Like, it's I not the craziest thing in Israel to go through a checkpoint. Let's, you, um, said, you said R that uh, Jews and, and Palestinians Ariel, live side by side in Hebron? Yeah, yeah real quick, I, I just want to zoom out a little bit because we're, we're getting to something, but we're, we're getting there. Sure. So uh, I just want to point out. Um, to, okay, fine. You fin uh, finish what you want to say. To, the, uh, to what, what would be on Malka's, what would be on the right of viewing Malka's screen or on Malka's left otherwise is a walkway between a Palestinian neighborhood and where the Abrahami Mosque is. Now, is there not a concrete and fence barrier in the middle of that walkway, one side for Jews and one side for Palestinians, right there. I can't go on the Arab side, Ariel. You're making it out to be like Jews can go everywhere exactly. except for where Arabs are. Exactly. But Jews, you don't understand that the that the apartheid is against us. Right. The apartheid is 97%. If you would go up to the top of Hebron, and look out, you would see an unbelievable bustling city full of malls, full of, of um, you know, every kind of fun, every kind of nice thing, beautiful houses. You know, when my daughter had her bat mitzvah in Hebron, right here in front of the tomb of the patriarchs and matriarchs, we wanted to make it really special. So you see right here, I'm trying to use the green screen, right here is a very nice family who's our friends, Arabs who live over there. And we asked them if they would do us a favor and shoot off fireworks for my daughter's bat mitzvah. And they said, we'll only do it if you 
if you let us do it for free. <laughs> Basically, they were like, we want to like take part in your celebration. You pay for the fireworks. We gave them money for the fireworks, but we're going to like shoot them off for you for free. And my daughter gave a speech all about Jew the Jewish connection to uh, the tomb of the patriarchs and matriarchs and to Hebron. And then we came outside Marta Machpelah, outside the tomb of the ancestors, and they called Isha and they're like, now? And he's like, not yet. And they're like, now? And he's like, not yet. And he's like, now? And he's like, yes. And they shot off like an epic firework display. But you don't want to highlight the friendships in Hebron. You, like the, the thought that Jews and Arabs would get together on anything in Hebron just like twists your insides because it, it means to you that you can't foment like a hatred between Jews and Arabs, which is like a sick thing that it seems to me that you want. You don't want to hear about good relationships between Jews and Actually, Arabs. Actually, you don't want to hear about the things that work out. You only want to highlight how Jews are this like long fanged, like I'll take off my mipachat so you can see my horns, like evil entity, bloodthirsty. You know, maybe maybe it's something like your friend, you, you interviewed this really nice lady. Uh, one time, her name is Manal Tamimi. Um, mm -hmm. You called her a Palestinian super mom. Here's what she puts up about us on Twitter. After actually, you know, you're, that's your really good friend. What else? Actually, Let's see. this this is something else she put up. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm gonna need to interject because we're not we're not doing. We're not doing character attacks here. We're talking about the issues. So let's let's stick to the issues. This, this question is why anti-Zionism today is gaining steam. Because Zionists fail to answer the question for how we could have a Jewish homeland and our Palestinian neighbors can be equal to us. It's not an easy question to solve, but I think this is, this is what I'd like us to focus on. Um, do, do you have any ideas, Malka, for how we can make that a reality? Um, I have a few thoughts. Um, we'll see how... Oh, I'm sorry, Ariel, would you like to go first? I, I had a question for you. Do you believe that Palestinians should have equal rights? I mean, you have to d tell me what equal means and you have to tell me what rights means. Do I think that every human being the, should be treated with dignity and every innocent and person should be treated with dignity? Of course. No. Nope. Should they be no. made citizens of Israel? The same Is that what you're asking? Should the pe people who do not have citizenship be made have. citizens? The same citizenship rights as I have. With Is that what you asked? Equality because Palestinians. So citizenship, citi citizenship. Actually, more than that, because Palestinian citizens of citizenship and more, because Palestinians inside Israel also don't have equality, but should have equality, full equality. Arabs in Israel have have equality. Um, I don't know. I have like no earthly idea what you're talking about. We have we have Arab Knesset members. We have Arab Over Supreme Court justices. I got a very gentle breast exam from an Arab physician once. Um, Arabs have plenty of equality in Israel. Uh, I think that and I think that like if you would ask Arabs in Israel, they would just be like, what are you even talking about? Like Arabs are very successful. Bibi Netanyahu, who I know is like your number one villain on planet Earth, just went to Nazareth and he like was met by a huge crowd of people who were talking about supporting him. Right. Because there are actually Arabs out there who want part of the Israeli dream of freedom. But that's not what you're asking. Uh, I like how you stuck that in there, though. Um, what you're really asking me is, should people who call themselves uh, Palestinians be made citizens of Israel? No, I don't think that they should be made citizens of Israel. Um, I don't, I, and I don't think that it's fair to tie that in with the concept of human rights. Um, I think that you can treat apartheid. people with, uh, with human rights and not give them citizenship. That is not apartheid. Apartheid is when you have, when, when like this person has, a, there's a water fountain and only the Jews can use it and the Arabs can't use it. This is not apartheid. Uh, I think that the apartheid argument um, is a ridiculous argument. And uh, I don't think that anyone here is dealing with anything remotely like that. Again, what I would do, if you're asking me what I, how I would solve this problem, and I agree that it's a problem that needs to be solved, and no one's happy, no one wakes up in the morning and goes, wow, you know, the Palestinian Authority, they're still not functional, and we have all this big uh, population of people, and we don't know what to do with them, and they don't know what to do with themselves either, frankly. I'm really happy about that. No, nobody says that. Um, but at the same time, I don't think that just because people um, who hate Israel and want to destroy Israel 
um, tell us that this is like our thing that we did wrong makes it our thing that we did wrong. This is something Jordan did. This is something Egypt did. And this is something that they should be part of solving. And the only reason that they are not part of solving it is because they want to be part of the problem and they want Israel to be under the gun. Um, do I think that people who live in Judea and Samaria who are peace loving people should be treated that way? A hundred million percent. I don't think that anyone deserves um, to be treated with violence who is not himself a, a violent person or a supporter of violence. Um, I certainly don't act that way and I certainly don't educate my children that way and I really don't know anyone who does. Um, and I think that, you know, when you talk about um, Adar, when you talk about the reason that people are anti-Zionist today and becoming anti-Zionist beca is because Israel is not acting appropriately toward Palestinians, I would I would take issue with that. I don't think that that's the reason people are becoming anti-Zionist. I think it's because they're getting earfuls of the kind of um, lies mixed with hate that people like Ariel are spewing in their ear and confusing them with disinformation. I think that most people who come to Israel, you know, incidentally, Hebron, Hebron is the capital of Judea. It is the second most visited site in Israel. It is um, a very popular place for religious people, non-religious people, Jews, non-Jews. Um, and I promise you that they're not watching um, Arabs in zip ties being taken away all day. It's a nice oh, place I've to seen, live for a I've lot of people. That. I'm sure you have, Ariel. I'm sure you've seen that. And I'm sure you think you Many tell times. people that it happens every five minutes, right? Um, uh, yeah, in conclusion, Adar, I think that that um, that we do have to treat people with um, with decency. I don't think the answer is to give them citizenship. You know, once the war on Israel was about shooting rockets at Israel, and when they saw that that didn't work, they they switched gears and said, well, you know, uh, we can't defeat Israel, so what we're going to do is just make them feel like really, really bad people. And we're going to suggest to them that the people who were attacking them like 42 seconds ago are now people that are not being treated well by them, and they have to be given citizenship, and they have to to be given what Ariel calls equal rights, which is basically control of the state of Israel. Um, and I don't buy it, and I don't think anyone else does either. Ariel, would you like to respond? Well, I don't think it's that they're being fed um, information. We just heard it right from the horse's mouth that all people born on that land, living on that land, um, indigenous to that land all people under israeli rule should not have the same rights and actually apartheid has nothing to do with water fountains um water fountains were an example of jim crow apartheid water fountains were an example of south african apartheid just because israel doesn't have separate water fountains or uh separate benches for jews and palestinians just because instead they have checkpoints, they have separate roads, they have separate legal systems, they have separate walkways, does not mean it isn't apartheid. And so again, this is not, uh, Jews are not um, turning away from blind support for Israel and Jews are not uh, overwhelmingly beginning more and more to embrace Palestinian rights because of disinformation. You just told us exactly the information that turns Jews away from Israel, that you don't believe that all people should have equal rights, that you believe that demographics need to be controlled so that control can be maintained. Well, are you suggesting Israel that the Palestinians don't want their own state? Are you saying that they don't want their own state? And if you are saying that, the two state who did you ask? Who made you the Israel. spokesperson for local peoples? You, you don't live here. You don't know the people here. You oh, don't uh, know what's going on here. You come in from your occupied house in Ithaca and you like white splain with your colonialist Western concepts of what governments and peoples are supposed to look like. And you think that everyone around here is like, it's like, it's almost like you're a Christian missionary. It's like you come in, we're the heathens, okay? And you come in with your big holy Bible and you're like, come peoples, I will make you human beings. Let me teach you how to run countries. Let me tell you what governance should look like. Let me tell you who should live where. And I say to you, Actually, back up. You don't know what's going on here. You are not 
a representative of the Palestinians. You, are, you don't listen when people talk. The Palestinian Authority is, is constantly saying uh, that they want a two-state solution, that they want a two-state solution. They pay millions of dollars uh, every year to the families of terrorists. Um, there was a survey that happened in 2014, after Mahmoud Abbas passed that legislation making people who sell land to Jews um, punishable by life imprisonment, 65% of people who call themselves Palestinians in that survey by the Palestinian Center for Policy and Survey Research in 2018, 64.4% said they support the death sentence for selling land to Jews. 87.8% said that Palestinians who sell land to Jews should be traitors should be called traitors. Now, what you're telling me is that those people want to be part of the state of Israel. Is that what you're telling me? There's already one single state. Israel long destroyed the two state solution. What I am saying, plain and simple and clear, if you cannot interrupt me this time, what I am saying is that all people living under the same government should have full equality with each other. Very plain and simple. And you said that I don't speak behalf of any, beha on behalf of anybody. I actually do speak on behalf of the group of Palestinians in your city, the Youth Against Settlements group, Palestinians who are indigenous for many, many, many generations uh, back in the old city of Hebron, Palestinians who are holding onto their land with every bit of determination, with every bit of samud that they have. I know you know where the Youth Against Settlements Center is, and I actually am speaking um, on behalf of them with their permission. And yes, they would like some equal rights and freedoms. Yeah, I mean, I, I would say that Palestinians definitely do want a state of their own, but it doesn't you know, two-state solution seems to be losing viability. So if they're not going to have a state, at the very least, they do want to be equal to to Jews. Right, so... Well, I would say, I would say, Adar, if that's... I mean, first of all, again, and I want to, like, just remind everybody that there's a little thing called terrorism that Israel's had to deal with for the last 72 years, including wars mm -hmm. and things. And after 2,000 years of getting our faces bashed in all the time, we're, like, still a little sensitive about violence. I think that if that mm -hmm. if the local population would uh, disavow violence against innocent civilians and would just show themselves to be a population that is nonviolent, um, I believe in Jews. I know what Jews are. Jews are merciful people. We're good people. Um, and anyone who really knows Jews knows that to be true. And I, therefore, I know that if that would happen, there would already be a very different atmosphere. Um, I also want to say that, again, I want to reiterate, because I think this is very important, that in a real, a real recordable, like, irrefutable injustice has been done to these people, which is that their citizenship was, was stripped away from them, which is illegal according to international law. And I think that if we would return the citizenship, the Jordanian citizenship, to the Jews, live, uh, to, excuse me, to the Arabs living in Judea and Samaria, I think that would actually solve a lot because those people would no longer be stateless. They would be able to use Jordan as a home base. They'd be able to vote there. As everybody knows, Jordan is already almost uh, exclusively um, a place where people who call themselves Palestinians live, except it was, you know, the, the, the crown was given to like buddies of the British Empire. And that's basically the only reason that it's not a Palestinian state. And I say that this is, I can't call it simple and easy, right? Because we're never going to come to a solution and everyone needs to like open up their ears to this. Everyone, Jews, right, left, uh, haters, everybody. There's no way we're going to come to a solution which is 100% beautiful. There's no way we're going to come to a solution where nobody gets hurt. It's not going to happen. Um, but what I will tell you is that the state of Israel um, and Ariel kind of implies it when she talks about Hebron and then immediately calls Israel an apartheid state, even though she, she is so wrong about that. She nonetheless implies something which is very true, which is that the state of Israel really relies on the 600,000 Jews of Judea, Samaria, and Eastern Jerusalem to be the forward guard of the state of Israel. Um, they rely on us to push forward um, 
to help reclaim lands, to be strong in places where violence uh, would break out against the state of Israel. And, you know, there's a diplomatic wing which has to deal with the international community and the fallout from uh, haters of Israel around the world. Um, but there's also people on the ground. And, and one thing that is also very important for you to understand, and it might be hard to hear, um, but it's true, is that we're not going to stop. We are going to continue living in Judea and Samaria. We're going to continue living in our ancient ancestral homeland. We're going to continue visiting and being part of the burial sites of our ancestors because that's our right. And anyone who wants to live here with us in true peace, which means nonviolence, accepting this teensy, weensy, Jewish ethnic state, tiny protectorate of the Jews in this big, scary world if they want to live here with us and not threaten us i think there's a way for that i think there's a way open for that i think there may even be a, a pathway to citizenship for some people who really really want it um but you know there is the the land mass of israel is twenty two thousand kilometers but the land mass of the arab world is like 13 million kilometers there's a huge arab world and you know ariel you're not a capitalist, right? You're like a socialist or a communist. I'm not sure exactly or something like that. Like if one guy has $13 million and the other guy has $22,000, who's the guy who should be paying? I think it's the guy with the $13 million. And so I'm saying that it, I think it would be quote unquote easy or rather the easiest solution for Jordan and the Arab world to finally do for these people what Israel did for all the 850,000 Jewish refugees from Middle Eastern and North African countries who had to flee for their lives without any of their stuff and were treated very violently, speaking of apartheid. Um, what, you know, what Israel did for them, which is to absorb them and stop the conflict.